Walworth's law left us with a puzzle. If we assume spending always equals income, will our economic models apply to all those people who spend less or even more than they have? To those who save or those who use credit? The answer lies in the fact that in economics, the concept of spending is a little different from the way the word is used in everyday life. If you save part of your money and put it in a bank, in fact, you're purchasing a financial product called a savings account. That product pays you interest. Even if you put your money in a mattress, in effect, you're buying a financial product that pays zero interest. So Walrus Law does apply to those who save and, in common parlance, spend less than their income. But what about those who spend more? Say, can't you take out a loan and violate Walrus Law? A budget constraint doesn't mean income and spending should be equal every instant. The constraint applies in the long run. If you take out a loan, you have to pay it off, ultimately equalizing the money you've spent and the money you've made. What Walrus Law says is that the consumer fully expends his resources over his lifetime. This is one way of viewing Walrus Law. I'll explain it using a different formulation in future episodes. Walrus Law appears in all reputable textbooks, but with different symbols. Nicholson and Snyder, an undergraduate textbook, uses I for income. Bavarian, another undergraduate textbook, uses M for money. MWG, a graduate textbook, uses W for wage, while other graduate textbooks like Jell and Rennie or Kraps use Y. Don't ask me for what.